Dear students, in this video, I am going to explain principal instrumentation and applications of Nefelo turbidometry. Now, let's start. Which phenomena will occur when light is allowed to pass through a semi-transparent medium? Now, suppose this is a semi-transparent medium and light is allowed to pass through it. Now, what will happen with that light? Some radiations will get reflected from the sample solution. Some will be absorbed in the sample solution. Some radiations will be transmitted from the sample solution and some will get scattered. Now, if the sample solution is homogeneous, the amount of reflection will be only 4% and the amount of scattering will be negligible. The amount of absorbed light and transmitted light is more in case of homogeneous sample solution. But if the sample solution contains suspended particles or insoluble particles the amount of scattered light will be more and this scattered light is studied by Neflo turbidometry the amount of scattered light is proportional to the concentration of insoluble particles that means as the number of particles will increase the amount of scattering will increase now we'll go for theory of Neflo turbidometry when the light is incident on a solution containing suspended particles or on a very fine suspension, scattering of light will occur and this is known as Tyndall phenomena or Tyndall effect. The fraction of light is scattered and remaining is transmitted. Now this is the basis of Neflo turbidometry. Nephlometry and turbidometry are two different techniques. We will see in detail one by one. Turbidometry deals with measurement of intensity of transmitted light. The, the intensity of transmitted light is inversely proportional to the concentration of suspended particles. Now, turbidometry measures turbidity of solution. If the amount of suspended particles is more, turbidity will be more. And as the turbidity is more, absorption of light is more. And as the absorption of light is more, transmission of light is less. And that's why the intensity of transmitted light is inversely proportional to the concentration of suspended particles in turbido turbidometry. Nephlometry deals with measurement of intensity of scattered light. The intensity of scattered light is proportional to the concentration of suspended particles. That means the if the sus amount of suspended particles is more, scattering of light will be more. The suspended particles must have very negligible solubility because both these techniques involve use of very dilute solutions. That means the suspended particles should be insoluble in the sample solution. The particles of dispersed phase must be very fine so that they do not settle quickly, settle down quickly. If the large particles are suspended, there, are t there is a tendency to settle down quickly. So if they, are get, uh, they got settled down, then the scattering of light will not be there. And to avoid this, the particle size should be very fine. So, uh, so, to avoid quick settling, the sample solution must be free of dust. Now, dust particles are also responsible for scattering of light. So, the sample solution must be free of dust particles. Now, we will go for individual technique, turbidometry. Turbidimetry deals with measurement of intensity of transmitted light as we know this thing. The intensity of transmitted light is inversely proportional to the concentration of suspended particles. Now at low concentration, this technique uh, follows Beer-Lambert's law and the equation of this technique is based on Beer-Lambert's law. The equation is S is equal to log to the base 10 I0 upon IT or S is equal to KTC is equal to minus log T. Now this equation is for low concentration solutions where S and T both terms are used for turbidance. 
I0 is intensity of incident light, IT is intensity of transmitted light, C is the concentration of suspended particles and K is the constant. Radiation source, monochromator, sample cell and detector. All these four important parts of instrument are in straight line or they are at 180 degrees to each other. Radiation source will emit the radiations. It will pass through the monochromator and then the radiations will pass through the sample cell. In the sample, some radiations are absorbed by the suspended particles and some are transmitted towards the detector. Now this is about the turbidometry. Now nephlometry. Nephlometry deals with measurement of intensity of scattered light. The intensity of scattered light is proportional to the concentration of suspended particles. The equation of this technique is 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 equal to Ks into I0 into C where I0 is the intensity of incident light, Is is the intensity of scattered light, C is the concentration of suspended particles, Ks is the constant. Now the radiation source, monochromator and sample cell in this nephlometry, they are in straight line. But the difference between nephlometry and turbidometry is that the detector, the detector in nephlometry it is at 90 degrees to the radiation source or at 45 degrees to the radiation source. Now scattering can occur in any direction. So that's why the detector is either placed at 90 degrees or at 45 degrees to the radiation source. Again the radiation source will emit the radiation, pass through the monochromator and uh, then the radiations will pass through the sample cell. Now in the sample, the suspended particles will scatter the radiations and these scattered radiations are measured by detector. Factors affecting scattering of light. First factor is concentration of particles, particle size, molecular weight of particles, wavelength of radiation. Now concentration of particles, we already know that the intensity of scattered light is directly proportional to the concentration of sample solution or concentration of particles in sample solution. Next factor is particle size. Scattering of light depends upon size and shape of particles. The amount of scattering is directly proportional to the square of effective radius of particle. Now scattering depends on particle size and shape. That means the larger particles will scatter the light more and smaller particles will scatter the light less. Smaller particle whose size is one tenth to the wavelength of incident light will cause symmetrical scattering of light while larger particles whose size is one fourth of the wavelength of incident light or it is greater than one fourth it will cause a symmetrical scattering uh, scattering of light now what is symmetrical and asymmetrical scattering symmetrical scattering means scattering of light in all direction is almost equal and asymmetrical scattering means scattering of light will occur more in in a particular direction and less in other directions. Molecular weight of particles. This is the third factor affecting scattering of light. Small molecular weight particles will cause less scattering of light while large molecular weight particles will cause more scattering of light. Wavelength of radiation. Shorter wavelength radiations are scattered to a greater extent while larger wavelength of radiations will sc scatter lesser extent. That means the shorter wavelength radiations will scatter more while larger wavelength radiations will scatter less. Blue light will scatter more and red light will scatter less because blue has shorter wavelength and red has longer wavelength. Now instrumentation of nephloturbidometry. If both these techniques are combined, the instrumentation will be as follows. There will be radiation source, monochromator, sample cell and a detector at 90 degrees to the radiation source and one more detector is at 180 degrees to the radiation source. That means 
if two techniques are combined ne flow and turbidometry two detectors are placed or one concave detector is placed now radiation source will emit the radiations it will pass through the monochromator then through the sample and from the sample either scattering of light will occur or transmission of light will occur or both the things will occur and these things are recorded scattering or transmission is recorded by the detector now radiation source used here is tungsten lamp or mercury lamp monochromator and filter is used in this instrument to convert polychromatic light into monochromatic light sample cell which is also known as cavet it is made up of glass in nephelot turbidimetry because the analysis is performed in visible region that's why glass is the material of construction of cavet the size and shape of cavets varies with the instrument but generally the width of cavet is 1 cm now such types of cavets are available for nephelot turbidimetry detectors used in this instrument are barrier layer cell or photovoltaic cell or photo tubes or photomultiplier tubes now all these parts that is tungsten lamp mercury lamp monochromator sample cell and detectors i have explained in the instrumentation of uv visible spectroscopy so you can refer those videos and get details the descript uh, the link is given in the description box now we'll go for applications of nephelot turbidimetry the first application is to examine water and air pollution by this technique turbidimetry is used to estimate turbidity of water that means to measure the pollution of water and nephelometry is used to examine dust and smoke in the air so this technique is used for pollution measurement of water and air determination of concentration of total protein in biological fluids such as urine and csf urine and csf has very less concentration of protein and that can be detected by nephelot turbidimetry determination of immunoglobulin in serum and other biological fluids coal oil rubber plastic samples are analyzed for analyzed by nephelot turbidimetry for estimation of sulfur content now uh, sulfur is first converted into sulfate and then it is treated with barium chloride and turbidity is produced and that turbidity is measured by nephelot turbidimetry turbidimetric titrations Uh, are performed by this technique one titration is estimation of sulfur or sulfate by titrating against barium chloride nephelot turbidimetry is used in pharmaceutical industries and petroleum refineries so this is about the nephelot turbidimetry